We will now do a preview of the coding required for implementing the working SOAP endpoint. Publishing the whistle, adding the dynamic whistle element to the Spring WS Servlet XML. Here the ID determines the URL where the whistle can be retrieved. In this case, the ID is get insurance, which means that the whistle can be retrieved as get insurance.whistle in the servlet context. Next, we set the whistle port type to be insurance service. We set the location where the service can be reached as slash insurance service. We use a relative URI and we instruct the framework to transform it dynamically to an absolute URI. Hence, if the service is deployed to different contexts, we don't have to change the URI manually. For the location transformation to work, we need to add an init parameter to the Spring WS servlet in web.xml. We define the target namespace for the whistle definition itself. Setting this attribute is not required. If not set, the whistle will have the same namespace as the XSD schema. The XSD element refers to the insurance service schema we defined in our previous manual whistle generation tutorial. We will place the schema in the web INF XSD subdirectory of the application. We need the insurance service and its implementation for use by our insurance Spring SOAP web service endpoint. For tutorial purposes, we will use a simple hard-coded implementation of the insurance service methods, write insurance application, and process insurance application. The insurance service impl is annotated with add service. This marks the class as a business facade, which makes this a candidate for injection by add auto wired in the insurance SOAP web service endpoint. In a production environment, this service will typically interface with a back end database and perhaps a business rule service as well. The insurance WS endpoint class is annotated with add endpoint. This marks it as a component type suitable for handling XML messages in Spring Web Services, and it makes it eligible for component scanning. The insurance WS endpoint requires the insurance service business service to operate, so we inject a dependency via the constructor and annotate it with add auto wired. The add payload root annotation tells Spring Web Services that the insurance application method is suitable for handling XML messages. The sort of message that this method can handle is indicated by the annotation values. In this case, it can handle XML elements that have the insurance request local part and a namespace URI. The insurance application method is the main handling method which gets passed with the insurance request element from the incoming XML message. The add request payload annotation indicates that the insurance application request parameter should be mapped to the payload of the request message. With these values, we invoke a method on the business service. Typically, this will result in a database transaction being started and some records being altered in the database, but not in our case. Finally, we define an insurance response return type and an add request payload annotation, which indicates 
to Spring Web Services that the response message will be the XML insurance response. The project has now been generated from the Maven archetype. The JAXP2 Maven plugin has run and it's created the Java classes from the insurance service.xsd in the source main resources directory for us. We will now revisit our reminder comments and fill them in. First, we open the web.xml. Let's add the init parameter. When the transform whistle locations in the init param element is set to true in the servlets configuration in web.xml, all the location attributes in the whistle definitions will reflect the URL of the incoming request. Next, we're going to have a look at the Spring WS servlet.xml. The context component scan element is as the name implies for component scanning. By default, it scans for all the beans with the add component annotation or for sub annotations like add controller, add service, etc. It will only register instances of those classes in the application context as beans. Next, we add the dynamic whistle element to the Spring WS Servlet.xml. Now notice that we are using a webinf xsd subdirectory for the location of our xsd file and not the source main resources directory because we want to be able to serve this file in a web app which means we have to move our xsd file to the new location and we have to update our jaxp2 plugin in the pom.xml with the new location. So first let's create the new location. Next let's move our insurance service.xsd file. Now we have to revisit the plugin definition in the palm.xml to update the location. Now let's run Maven clean package and see if our class generation still works. Looks like that works. Now 
let's run the Maven Tomcat plugin and see if our whistle is automatically being generated for us by the Spring Web Services. Looks like our web service is up and running. So open it up in a browser. Well, in a browser, it says the page is not working, but let's have a look at uh, the getinsurance.whistle. Excellent. Here we have our full whistle served to us by Spring Web Services. As we can see down here, we have the insurance request message and the insurance response message.